As you can see from the most recent Eisen Bridge attack, many of the shield bearers have fallen in combat, but I'm certain that Commander Goodman can hold the line. Hello there friends and welcome back to more Bradley Default. Last time, we infiltrated Grab Keep and found ourselves the toxic mist concoction that was used to massacre a hundred thousand soldiers, both sword and shield bearer alike. We destroyed the concoction and we are now going to be making our way towards the mithril mines to see if we can free these canary boys from the clutches of the sword bearers. So, let's head that way. But as usual, we are going to be tackling the Rende village first and foremost. So, we have the bloody shield now, the desert rose from the compound shop, and some gifts from the trader, and the combat item shop. Honestly, we're getting to a point where I might need to spend an entire episode just upgrading one shop. But today is not that day, so first up on the list we're going to be upgrading the combat item shop so we can get the bomb arm. And next we're going to be upgrading the hill parts shop so I can get the special move parts speed up and down. There we go, that's been tackled and out of the way. We can head towards this left gate that has now been opened up for us thanks to Commander Goodman. And that leads us straight to the mithril mines. So, let's enter inside. to help you. Are they really forcing you to work these mines? That's right. The shield bearers asked us to rescue you and your friends. The shield bearers? But I'll be in trouble if the guards catch me slacking off. You don't have to worry about that anymore. How many other children are there in the mine? There are 20 of us on duty right now. No. Make that 19. Thank you. You go and hide in that shed with the others, okay? Got it. Hey, what are you doing in here? Looks like a rescue operation is on the table. Let's take down this Black Blades Pikeman. This is a new type of enemy. We haven't actually crossed swords with the Black Blades just yet, outside of Captain Barbarossa. So, let's go ahead and see if there's anything unique about him. There you go, ring a bell, you're our new miscellany man. Okay, they poke pretty de decent damage. Alright, examine, 2800 HP, weak to lightning. Oh, well, I guess we already know how that's going to end up for him. There's only one of him, so right now I think I'm just going to wail on him. I don't think he's going to be all that dangerous. And then Idia... Since you have access to sword magic, let's just pop a thunder on ya. I don't want to spam too much magic. And then on yes, unfortunately the black pikemen and black blades in general are not commonly undead, so you'll just be on healing duty. Okay, there is the black blades' main gimmick. They have counters. Wanted to show that off, and it hits pretty hard, as you can see. Eh. Tiz was in for a uh, for a death, anyways. He uh he hasn't died yet, so that evens out a little bit of the exp. But yeah, we got to play a little careful around that. Uh, we can still use On Yes as our healer here. She's got enough MP. I haven't actually gone back to heal my MP yet, which is a little bit of an oversight. But I, I think I'll be okay. You plan on rescuing all the children in the mine, do you? Well, good luck. Thanks, Ari, for the modicum of support there. Alright, rescue operation, save the Canary Boys is a go. We have to navigate the Mithril Mines and find as many Canary Boys as we can. There were 19 of them on duty, so we gotta find them all. Hey, I don't know you! And of course, Black Blades will be guarding them as we try to, you know, navigate the mines. This is a Black Blade, and they have a sword! I think... There's not really anything to worry about with this guy. I don't know if Ring of Bell is actually going to get his exam off in time. But I'm just going to go ahead and hit anyways. Hopefully this one doesn't have counter as well. Edge of Madness. That's their main gimmick. It's a hard-hitting physical attack that will cause Confuse. Great. 
Otherwise, they aren't very they aren't very strong, and Tiz is spending all of four, all of his actions running. Okay. Thankfully, he hit Idia with that uh, scale strip or shell strip, and she has damage this person on, so it didn't do too much too much damage. That means there's 16 left. The shield bearers asked us to come and rescue you. Okay. Thank you. Okay, on we go. Earth Drum. Uh, let's go ahead and give white magic to... Hmm. Ah, uh, Anya's will be fine. She doesn't need her MB in combat anyways, so... She'll just heal in between each encounter. There's a black blade. Shield bear scum. How did you get in here? We've got another pikeman. We know how to deal with this. Um... I think I'm going to let Idia take the lead here and apply Fundara so we can see if we can take him down before his counter becomes any more of an issue than it already is. Thank you, Vranyas, for going first. There's the counter, but it's on damage dispersion, so it's not going to do too much damage. There we go. Idia's damage is insane if she can hit those weaknesses. That's crazy. Only 14 more to find. The shield bearers asked us to come and rescue you. So we don't have to work anymore? Yay! Alright. A few more canary boys to go, and I think we'll be out of here scot-free. Uh, there's another Black Blades member. You can probably see the gimmick of this dungeon. Find the canaries, kill the Black Blades, save the canaries, and rinse and repeat. Hold it. Don't move a muscle. Alright, and it doesn't seem like there's really all that much uh, black blades guarding this area. It, seem, it seems to be more of a front than anything. We're going to run the same strategy here, though. Have uh, Idia deal with the the pikeman herself because of her insane damage output. Oh my goodness. They have 20, 2800 HP and she took it down in one hit. We have to find 12 more. The shield bearers asked us to come and rescue you. Thanks. Tiz has really taken on kind of a leadership role when it comes to uh, the most recent chapters here, at least the uh, most recent dungeons. He seems to be very gung-ho about helping these people out and joining in this conflict, even if it's not his to fight, really. Shield bearer scum, how did you get in here? It shows his selflessness, and that's something we we have seen quite often with his, but we get to see it on full display here. This is an axe fighter, so different enemy. Let's examine, and then we'll have everyone else. Actually, we'll have Anya heal once, and then we'll have everyone else default, so we get at least some of the uh, the action there. That was his most hard, that was his hardest hitting attack right there, which is a single target axe attack that will lower defense. He's not too bad. 3,000 HP with a weakness to lightning. So you all know what we're doing. We're going to set up Bandara and we're going to poke him with a very pointy spear. Oh, thanks for the revenge proc there. And see ya. We're getting decent EXP and JP for this, but we're also only fighting one enemy. All right, just tend to go now. The shield bearers asked us to come and rescue you. Thanks. There we go. Let's head north a little bit here. There's a treasure chest right over here. I don't know you. We got ourselves another black blade. We already know what's going to happen. Sayonara. And Tiz learned Berserk at job level 7. All right, let's check that out. Berserk. Raise physical attack by 50% and continue making conventional attacks for 6 turns. Note that Berserk's physical attack increase does not stack with other physical attack boost effects. This is interesting. Um, this pairs well with mass attack, as it increases your physical attack by 50%, but really, this isn't too useful. So you won't see me using this all too much. Alrighty, there's a chest that this Black Blade was guarding as well that gave us a Turbo Ether. 
Also, I do want to just admit that I didn't realize that my encounter rate was turned down a little bit lower than I'd wanted, but there are actually regular enemies here in the Mithril Mines alongside the Black Blades. So let's go ahead and tackle these guys right now. We have the Mithril Shell and a Succubus. Great. All right. Uh, we already kind of can glean what the Mithril Shell is going to be based around. He's similar to the Land Turtle, who had a lot of physical defense. So I think it's best if we examine him and see what his elemental weakness is before we do anything else. I guess I'll have Anya's heal as well. Oh, he's defaulting. Ooh, that Succubus is hard. Okay. Examine. 5,000 HP, but is weak to water. So we'll pop a Blizzara on our weapons, and we'll be off in no time. We're gonna have Tiz hit Succubus because they don't have very high physical defense. Uh, Ring a Bell will have you. Def we'll actually have you examine the Succubus if she still lives. And then Idia, we're going to have you pop a Blizzara on your spear and start hitting that shell. And then on Yes, we will have you heal again. He's braving. There's Entice. That's a charm, unfortunately. Ooh, spin attacks a hard-hitting physical attack. All right. 7, 13, yeah, yeah, see, look, they don't have very high physical defense. <laughs> Thankfully, the Viking Axe does have already an automatic water stat tied to it, so he does a, a bit of extra damage. The strategy won't change here. Unfortunately, it is just slower than the Land Turtle, or, sorry, the Mithril Shell. My bad, bro. And she, it's defaulting anyways, but we'll still get some extra chip damage in here. There we go. Uh, we'll go ahead and default, yeah. An attack, there goes Tiz. He's going to get one more action in, so I'm actually going to have Agnes finish him off. I'm going to have her use a Phoenix down. And then I'm going to have her use Blazara three times. There we go. There we go, Agnes. Red Mage coming in clutch, being able to provide a... You know, a lot of utility right there. And Idiot gained a job level. She learned high jump. High jump. Jump out of the screen and come hurtling down in the next turn, dealing three times the damage of a conventional attack. Note that the damage is increased 4.5 times if a spear is equipped. This is a very strong ability, similar to jump. The downside is, look at that BP required to actually use this ability. It's 2 BP. Very, very expensive. Okay, so let's head south. We got the Canary Boys over there to the west. There's this red door and the adventurer. Hey, buddy, you want to help us out saving these child slaves? That'd be really swell of you. No? Fine. All right. So let's head west. Oh, there's a blue chest. Also, yeah, if you if you uh, didn't think Chapter 3 was going to get dark enough with chemical warfare and the massacre of 100,000 soldiers, child slavery. Examine. All right, Succubi are weak to wind. Carbuncles are weak to wind and dark. So if you have any wind magic, like Arrow, good use of, good use of it here. And these guys dropped an e two ethers and a demon tail. Ooh, okay. We still really don't have any use for the uh, enemy drops, like the demon tails or the beast livers and such. But I'm sure we'll have a use for them here soon. See down here. Hold it, don't move a muscle. Another black blade. Just one measly black blade though, so nothing too crazy. We've got to find the last six. The shield bearers asked us to come and rescue you. Thanks. Okay, nothing else over here. There is a red chest to the northwest. Let's heal up a little bit. That damage person is coming in real handy. 1,000 peak, all right. It's mitigated a lot of damage that otherwise would have absolutely killed Idia. It actually probably saved me from that uh, encounter with the automatons. Who are you? Only a few left, uh, only a few canary boys left, so let's finish this up and go home. Okay, now there's just four to go. The shield bearers asked us to come and rescue you. Thanks. Okay, so we need to check the bottom left here now. Oh, fight time. There we go. Big turtle down. 
And no EXP. Okay. South. And there's another black blade, of course. This is a pikeman. Okay, we gotta play a little safe here now. Let's go ahead and heal up with Anya's turn one. And for the we're all healthy. And then Idia, we will set up the thunder. And finish them off. Hopefully the counter won't do too much damage. One, two, three. There we go. Just two more. The shield bearers asked us to come and rescue you. Thanks. Alrighty, there we go. Two, two more left, and then we're out of there. As a quick side note, if you don't have damage dispersion and a really powerful Valkyrie like I do, uh, utilizing magic is your best way of taking down these pikemen, as they only counter physical attacks. Uh, there doesn't seem to be any more boys down here, so let's head upstairs. And let's investigate. We didn't go to this far left side, so that should be our final two canary boys. If we can get through the succubi. Sweeping down. There we go. We got some bonuses for that. No level ups, but we got our job level up. Anya's gained a job level and learned BP recovery. She's now job level 9, along with Idia. BP recovery. Raise BP by 2 when sustaining a status ailment. This is actually quite useful and very abusable. You can, as as a red mage, you have access to poison and Esuna. So you can actually poison yourself over and over and over again and Esuna yourself over and over and over again to constantly give yourself more and more BP. That's one way of utilizing it, but if you're also going up against enemies that love placing status ailments on yourself, on well, on your team, that ability is really good as well. I won't be equipping it right now, as I don't want to abuse it, at least not yet, but it's good to have on the list. Alright, so let's take a hard left here, and confront our final member of the Black Blades. And of course, it's a pikeman. One hit, one kill. The way I like it. No level ups, but that's okay. Great, now let's get out of here. All the canary boys are now freed up. We got the X potion. And there we go. Let's head back to Commander Goodman and give him the good news. Don't worry. We've taken care of all the guards. The shield bearers will be here to take you to safety soon. Thanks, but what about Egil, the new boy? He was taken to the sword bearer's stronghold this morning. We haven't seen him since. Why was he taken away? Egil said something about finding a passage leading out of the mine. He slipped away from his post and was headed there. So he must have been caught by one of the guards. Please, you have to help Egil. Okay, the sword bearer's stronghold, right? I'll go and help Egil. Thank you. The sword bearer's stronghold is a place called Starkfort, far to the north. Wait, Tiz. We should leave this to the shield bearers. It would be reckless to venture into the inner sanctum of the enemy by ourselves. But I have to help him. You've been acting stubborn ever since we got here, it seems. I have to help him. No matter what. Looks like we have our next destination, though. Stark Fort, to the north. It's been a long day for both our crew and the Canary Boys, so I think we've all deserved a well-earned rest. But next time on Bravely Default, after we have gotten our MP and HP back up to full, we will be going to Starkfort to see if we can save this young boy, Egil. So, 
with that said, I'll see you soon. Can't sleep, huh? Oh, it's just... I've had a few restless nights lately. For a while, no? Huh? Ever since we've been traveling together, you've been like this. You haven't slept well in a while, have you? Uh, you notice? Any idea why? There must be a reason for it. There is, actually. Ten twenty-five. An urgent wire from Caldisla came during the night. Sky Knights routed. The Vestal and crew commandeered the SK ship with Idea in tow. Eleven thirteen. The Florsheim Inner Sea remains unsullied, and serves now as a holding place for ships from neighboring waters as well. I walked the port, asking after the Vestal's whereabouts, or those of the ship she stole, at least, but was unable to uncover anything useful. My continued search brings me to Ansheim proper. The ship's almanac has this to say of it. A clockwork metropolis nestled in Harina's sandy bosom. Here time, above all, is sacred. A massive timepiece crowns the kingdom, fueled as all of Anchime by the ceaseless currents originating from the Temple of Wind to the south. I crossed the desert and arrived at the city's edge. It seems those ceaseless winds have ceased in the chasm's wake. Deprived of a precious power source, Anchime's people now suffer under forced manual labor. Those I met were too tired and apathetic to answer my questions. One man, perhaps motivated by the coin I flashed, blushed awkwardly as he stammered this. Try the Yuyana Woods. I reached out to hand him the money, but he turned and ran without taking it. Very odd. I returned to my almanac. Yuliana Woods, the hidden heart of an ancient wood northeast of Anshine. 1123. The air in front of Anshine's royal palace was taut. The Vestal heaped abuse upon the king, then presented something to the agitated masses assembled there. It was a chain bearing an evil sigil. The glassy-eyed mob reached fever pitch. The Vestal pointed south, and the delirious mob turned their eyes to the sky, crying out her name. I moved to approach her, but the zealous crowd was packed tight. Fearing for his life, the king fled to the palace, escorted by his guard. <laughs> 